and listen to that sound out back there. Everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thanks so much for joining me on today's video, regardless of the flavor that you grew up in, right? All the cars that we have here are amazing, but everybody kind of has their own flavor. It's like what you were, whether maybe your dad had or an uncle or friends or whatever it is, everybody gets bit by a flavor, but there's no mistaking a car with cubic inches in the 440 range, right? With upgraded components to make it even more powerful, doesn't make for a fabulous car, right? Throw in matching numbers, throw in great colors, throw in the restoration, throw in uh, some stuff that I wanna talk about and spend some time on and I'll tell you why. So for instance, if I was gonna own a classic car, right? Uh, and keep it forever or keep it for a while and enjoy the drive, let's just say for a while. A while could be whatever that number may be, right? This has the upgrades that I would have done exactly, right? And there's a couple small changes you can make yourself, make it your own, and we're gonna talk about that as well. We're gonna look at quality of paint today. We're gonna to look at detail. We're gonna have an awesome time on this car. Let's get started. All right, so probably the most important thing about a car is the paint, right? You can say, Tone, come on, right? The restoration, the engine, like the uh, interior, that's way more important than paint. I'm like, whatever, right? When's the last time you said, I'm looking for the most ugly person I can find, that's who I wanna date. That's my point. My point is, if this car was all primered, but the engine was fabulous and the interior was fabulous, you would not be watching this video right now. So as shallow as I am, welcome to the club. All right, so that's why I bring this up, is this is lime green metallic paint, right? I'm gonna make sure that I got that right when I said that. Uh, because it is limelight green. I knew I made a mistake there, sorry about that. Because I get confused sometimes on my Mopar colors because I've owned personally limelight cars from 70, which is a different color than limelight from 69, right? All right, uh, here, this is a gray color. I have personally owned many cars in this color, in this color, and in the sun, it is spectacular. You go to a car show at night with the LED lights shining down in the parking lot, it glows like something else. And more importantly, you need to see the quality of paint and video. If you can read these letters all nice and clear, then you know this is really good paint. If they're fuzzy and what have you, uh, then we don't have great paint. And you should be asking other people, if you're not getting this car, let's say you missed it for some reason, ask those people to do a video. Ask them to do this test for you. This is the only way to really know uh, what this stuff looks like. So come on up here for a second and let's check out the quality of this paint. And there we got, look at that in the paint there, beautiful. You can see, uh, unfortunately, you can see me in it, which is a setback. However, it's important, right? The words and what have you. And then I get this last part from people all the time. Tone, that's a great looking car, but they don't really know why it's a great looking car. And I wanna point out a couple small things for you real quick while we're doing this. The red line tires, a must have. They are period correct. These are radials. These are not inexpensive tires, okay? Uh, these are BFGs and they are uh, radial red lines, uh, silver town. <sighs> the red pinstripe here, the matted out uh, black factory done, factory done matted paint before matted cars were even a cool thing, right? Today, that's a cool thing and very expensive to get done. These red inserts, as you walk around, this right here, why did they do vinyl tops back in the day? I'll tell you why, two reasons, one, uh, it gave you uh, the sleek look, but most importantly, it was designed to look like a convertible without the, the squeakiness and the things that go along with buying a convertible, not to mention the cost of a convertible, right? This gave you that great look, and then this great looking quarter panel. This is the last thing I wanna talk about as I ramble on, is this is a super long panel, super long panel, right? If this is, uh, if this is 2024, and we are approaching the, you know, the 60, plus year mark on these cars, right? These cars have been through the heat and cold, heat and cold, heat and cold, and it's very difficult to make all these panels work well. This car here is done well, and I wanted to share this with you because this is important. That is a solid door. That's a solid, just everything seems to fit so well. The gaps are well. I'm spending extra time on this because I want you to see, sometimes I get excited about a car because I see so many of them, so many of them, are nice and shiny, but they're rattly and just not put together well and what have you. That is not the case here. We have something that's really, really exceptional. 
All right, let's take a peek under here. Why do I want to spend some time under here? Because wrapped up under here are the things that I would have done to the car to make it more user friendly for my elderly self. Okay, let me tell you what I mean by that. So for instance, this here has, this is a modified engine. It's a matching numbers engine, but it's modified with great parts. I mean, great parts, okay? Uh, Indy cylinder heads, intake manifold, uh, fuel injection. Okay, why is a fuel injection a big deal? Because you know what? You don't have to worry whether it's five degrees outside or 105 degrees outside. Hit the key, it starts up all the time. It just doesn't care. You don't smell like gas because the system is closed, right? It has a closed fuel system where a carburetor car does not have that. And when you have a camshaft that's a little bigger than normal, you don't get enough vacuum. And if you want power disc brakes and you don't have any vacuum, vacuum canister is worthless, right? It's like standing on wood trying to stop the car. This has an upgraded hydro boost system, which then turns this into power brakes all the time and the vacuum doesn't matter. Why is this important? Okay, here's why it's important. Because any of these changes that I've done here, right, can go back to stock in a second. So easy to convert back to stock. We haven't changed anything in here that would prevent you from making this car all stock again. As these cars are going up in value, someday this car will be a $300,000 car, and maybe it's worth $400,000 if it has the stock brakes and things like that on it. Maybe, maybe not, don't know, but don't care at this moment. Here I have a matching numbers, beautiful car that's coded out on the fender tag, which we have as well, right? And all the other documentation we have, but also throw in this last piece, air conditioning. This is modern air conditioning. This is an old school uh, air conditioning that's 60 or 70 years old. This is a modern system. It's cold, it has great heat. It's got all of that stuff. Radiator's been done, big fans, all of this not to mention a nice ignition system as well, which is 100% more efficient than the original ignition system that came on the car, all right? Why am I going through all this? Because this is what makes this car sound, drive, and feel so different than anything else. When we start this car and you hear the exhaust coming out, of the, you'll be like, you know what, Tone? Now I get it. All right, so the restoration on a car doesn't just stop at the sides of the front and what have you. The back of the car is important. Why? Not that you're gonna look at it, uh, but because this car is really fast and a lot of other people are probably going to be looking at it, okay? But when you have correctness, right, and that's what we're offering here, we're talking about a car that is correct, right, from the, uh, the matching numbers that we talked about earlier, from the uh, uh, exhaust tips that are back here, uh, for the chrome and stainless and things like that, all that stuff makes a difference. It just makes for a much nicer car. Then we go ahead and say, okay, how's the trunk? Well, no one really cares about the trunk because you're not going to spend a lot of time. It's not, you're, you're not going away for the weekend in it, but I want you to, and I'll show you why. Here it is here, done the way a Mopar is done, and that means that it's painted all inside here, okay? Uh, if you're looking at a GM car or a Ford, they don't paint the insides of their trunk. Chrysler did that, uh, but it's painted under here. The jacking instructions are still here. Um, we also found a spare tire. It's a little dirty. I left it a little dirty kind of a, as an old school kind of thing because this is kind of an original style uh, Super Sport tire there at Firestone, right? And it could be original. Don't know. I don't know if it has a date code on it. I didn't research it enough, but I just thought it was kind of cool to see it in there. And uh, lastly, the truth is you can throw a couple chairs in here, a cooler, a couple bags, go away, go to a car show that's 300 miles away, stay overnight, enjoy this. This is what people did back in the 60s, and you might as well do it today. And while walking up to your cool car is great, right? It's good looking. You're like, man, this is, the, this is nice. This is a game changer. You're going to spend a lot of time inside there. I want to I get inside there now because uh, while this has always been uh, uh, an important piece for everybody, this is a beautiful restoration. We spent a lot of time talking about it. Inside is just as nice, and I don't want to minimize that. So let's get in here for a second and talk about that, right? So the GTX, the GTX gave us a nicer car, right? Uh, over the Roadrunner, satellite, things like that, okay? Why? Because this was the gentleman's muscle car. And in here, uh, you have really nice bucket seats, right? You have door panels that are not cheapo, just black card, which is like typical of like Camaros, Mustangs, things like that, because they were inexpensive cars. Not that that's bad, I'm just sharing with you what a luxury muscle car looks like versus not, right? This padded dash here, Mustangs and Camaros don't have that. They have a flat steel dash, right? Nothing there. Here we have all of that stuff. We have full gauges here, right? The customer uh, that built this car for us uh, before we got it loved gauges and 
he wanted to put in extra gauges and they are in there. They don't have to stay if you don't want them, right? This is where the radio would go. We can leave that there. We can put a blank panel in. Uh, we could also hide a radio inside the glove box here if you want to, right? There's a couple options that you have while you have it. But the cool thing is that it's got buckets, it's got console, it's got the fuel injection uh, modification, the little uh, uh, control unit inside there if you wanted to make any changes. It runs so beautifully you don't have to. But this is a factory air conditioned car and you can tell by the vents that are here that this car had AC. And so that's all of the system is kind of working in the same place. This is showing 859 miles since the restoration. The headliner is nice. This is important things too. When you see these lights working, this light work, you say with tone. That it's, they're all supposed to work. Well, you're absolutely right. They're all supposed to work. However, to get a lot of this stuff to work 50, 60, 70 years later on these older cars, right, is a lot of effort that finally when people get to this place have run out of money, right? It is super expensive to restore these cars. And that's why some people take shortcuts. In this case here, I think we're seeing that this was serious and this is a lot of money spent. And what you'll be getting is a fabulous, fabulous car. All right, so we close up the video on this. I want to run down a few things because we looked at a lot of stuff, right? Let's talk about this. So we have a real GTX. It's in the registry. This is a low production car because it was expensive during its time. It's still matching numbers, right? Not only is it matching numbers, it's a beautiful restoration. And not only is it a beautiful restoration, it has these kinds of things that I think add so much to it. For instance, uh, the Magnum 500s with redline radials, right? The upgraded air conditioning system, the upgraded fuel injection system, even if you didn't want any more power, because 375 is plenty in this car, this has way more than that now with the Indy cylinder head upgrade, uh, intake manifold, uh, the ceramic coated headers, the free flow exhaust, like all of these things play into a lot of power and a great sound, which you're gonna get to hear shortly. Throw in uh, the braking system, throw in the fully restored interior, and you have what you say is, a, is what I would say, one of the best muscle cars ever built. Anyway, call us, 301. 816-1000 will tell you all about this 69 GTX. And if you don't mind, hit the like button down below. It helps us get the message out. Subscribe to the channel. We have new stuff coming out all the time. Maybe share it with your friends as well. They might see some stuff there they like too. And I'll see you on the test drive. All right, so, so some of the best part about this car is I want to put my feet here. The fuel injection is a game changer, right? Normally we'd be pumping the gas. We'd be waiting for it to get warm. We couldn't go for a little while. The fuel injection really is one of the best things to ever happen to cars. Radial tires and fuel injection. And check this out. Ready? And then listen to that sound out back there. normal that you take uh, a muscle car uh, out for a windy road, but I wanted to share with you how nice this car really was. Normally we'd go straight and step on the gas and make it sound great, but this car handles. The drivetrain has spent a lot of money piecing it all together, making everything work, right? Like if you shift this down here, nice crisp shifts like that. This has a lot of power. I suggest you're going straight. Uh, when you decide to tip into the throttle. Not to mention the gauges look nice. It's got a tack right here. Um, and if things go awry, like if you're at the red line, this will go red. If this oil pressure is too low, it'll go red. Uh, and again, you don't need all these gauges if you don't want them. But when you see a car and you get a car that's really, really nice, I get excited and that's why I talk about it a lot because uh, you don't know the effort a lot of times that it takes to get a car at this level. Everything has been done on this car to make it a better driving car. And throw in the fact that it's got value because it's because it's matching numbers and what have you. It's really nice. And then I throw in this last little cool piece, and I, I know it sounds silly, but when the clock works, it says to me, the people finish the last steps of it because nobody really cares about the clock. And when you make the clock work, you are willing to spend whatever it took uh, to make that happen. All right, so we're wheeling down our road still, going for a little longer drive, because this is a great car, man, great car. And I just want to share, imagine going to the beach or something with the AC on. Maybe you decided that you want to take off smoking and you could open your little vent window here. I've been thinking about it a lot. 
it seems to be cool. A lot of people are doing it. I don't know if it's good for you or not because they don't really talk about it much. All right, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, the point is that uh, we're old school. We're riding. We have plenty of room in here. We can take... Uh, imagine going to, to, to dinner in this car with another couple, right? Or with the kids. And then listen to the rattles in the car. Like none to be heard. This is such a well-built car. Go for a ride with me, man. Go for a ride with me. And let's keep on rolling.